Hi, I'm Mary Greendale, and welcome to another edition of Just Thinking. Today we're going to talk about real estate in Holliston, and for this occasion I've invited four of my favorite realtors. There are a bunch of other ones in town that I like too, but I just picked this four. Anyway, so to my left, Ed Daniels. Hello. Kathleen Chisholm. Hello. Aaron Pyman. Hi. And Lisa Zayas. Now, Lisa's uh, most especially involved in commercial, so I'm really going to tap your brain on that one because I know that's where you've spent many years um, on the subject. So right now, this last year, I sold my house. So I have a, a bunch of mixed feelings. I had an overwhelming experience. So for any senior who is thinking about selling, the first thing is to admit to yourself it's going to be overwhelming and then go with it. Uh, the second thing is... Um, it's a great relief not to have to pay a tax bill. Um, it's been since 1964 that I got my first tax bill, and I finally don't have tax bills. <laughs> so that feels pretty good. But that said, um, what your house is valued at may surprise you, both up or down, and I'm hoping that today's conversation will help you get a better idea of exactly where you would fit in the, in the picture of um, what's available in Holliston and what you might need to do to your home. I ended up having to do a fair number of things to mine, um, but it was all worth it in the end. But when you get your tax bill and your assessment is high, you don't appreciate the value as much, <laughs> you know? It's very different from when you're selling it. It was great when I sold it, but when I look at the appraisals or the assessments now on tax bills, it's like, ooh, that hurts. So. We're going to start with just, this is a general question, but I, I want each of you to be able to say, how, what do you think is going on in the market in Holliston today? And so, Ed, I think I'll just start with you, and you can run down the line. Sure. Well, thanks for having us. Um, I think the market right now is a real professional's market. Like you said, it's a lot of um, anxiety when you're selling a house. And if you've been there for a long time, like a lot of people in Holliston are, you end up collecting a lot of stuff. And I think all of us are keen towards that of helping to assist well in advance of a sale to get the home ready. So um, the buyers are having a tough time right now. There's not enough houses on the market. And so um, we are looking for listings. Where are you, are you saying specifically in Holliston there aren't enough listings or is it Holliston and other communities? It's other communities also. Okay. But, okay. but speaking just of Holliston, it's, it's a very tight inventory okay. marketplace. Okay. Kathy, your impressions? I completely agree um, that the lack of inventory is, has made it a very strong seller's market. Um, when you look at the absorption rate, which is the economic model that shows you how long it should take to, for a house to sell or for all the inventory to sell, um, in Holliston right now it's less than one month. So that's great for sellers, yeah. um, but it's, as Ed said, very challenging for buyers. We're seeing, because of the lack of inventory, multiple offer situations, things are going very quickly, and it can be very competitive And for let buyers. me just say, as an assessor, I, will, I, I would need to say this for all of us to remember. When there is a competition for a price and it ends up going higher and higher and higher, that's taking everybody else's values in that neighborhood and going higher and higher and higher. Yeah, but the right. following year or two years later, they may not be able to sell for that same price if they go back and try it. And we're running into a lot of problems, uh, especially with high-end houses. Mm -hmm. But that's just a sidebar observation. Mm -hmm. Aaron, anything to add in terms of the general market? I would, you know, and it, we would all agree, I, there's no inventory. Um, statistically speaking, the end of the fourth quarter of 2019, there were about a third fewer houses on the market than at the end of the fourth quarter of 2018. And that's a big number, right, about 32%. If you take that back several years, it's kind of peaked in, I think, 2016, and, and it's basically been going down since then. So there's about half as many houses on the market right now across the board, you know, county by county. And this is something that's really sort of like Worcester Eastward is experiencing this. Once you get out a little past Worcester, things settle down. Um, so that, there's just a dearth of listings. So what's happening is right now the first time home buyers are out there and they're also competing with the downsizers for the same properties. And there's so few, we ended up with these multiple offer situations. And you know, I'm starting, I don't know about you guys, I'm starting to see appraisal problems where the bank is not agreeing to the appraisal of these crazy over asking offers, yeah. which is a whole other can of worms. So yeah, I know sense. we're all praying for more inventory because quite frankly, if we don't get it before long, 
I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think there'll be a, a burst bubble like there was previously, but... I mean, it, it, at some point, something's got to give. Correct. Lisa, what's happening in your, from your corner? Well, I agree with all three. I mean, we have no inventory, little to none. I think there's 19 homes on the market in Holliston. Um, we seem to be on track um, for where we were last year, though in the last five years, we're pretty comparable to where we are now. So it's a seller's market. There's tons of buyers out there and no inventory. And this goes all the way you know, across the state. Boston is the same way. Um, Alston and Brighton, there is nothing on the market, zero. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look on MLS, you just have to, you know, go knock on doors. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Literally. Cold so. calls for a house. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's yeah. how I bought my house on 1090 Washington Street, but never mind, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what are buyers looking for? What do you think they're looking for, Kathy? I think that what I'm seeing a lot of um, in terms of buyer preferences are properties that don't require a, a lot, lot of, work. of work. Move in ready, you know, show up with the suitcases, order takeout, and start That's living. Um, that was probably the single biggest eye opener for me, and also one of the hardest things to achieve. You know, because in my case, I was lucky. Where I was going, I could go at any time. It really didn't matter. My house basically sat there empty as a showpiece. Mm -hmm. It was staged, quote unquote, which we will discuss, but it was staged. I could leave it. It didn't get dusty, dirty in the middle of the day, that kind of thing. For most people, you've got to be in and out of the house. Your kids are still, right. you know, whatever. It's very stressful. But, but the, the whole effort of sort of getting out of it, not being a part of the house and looking, you know, so it can't look like you. My house didn't look like my house. Yeah, it's depersonalized. You know, it's totally depersonalized. Yeah. And that's really hard. So if there are any seniors out there listening, I mean, that's probably going to be one of the hardest things for you to get, get a handle on is how much of your stuff you have to strip out, get out of the house, um, take it down off the walls, you know. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to, I mean, even little things that you would say to yourself, we were do-it-yourselfers, so we would do anything. We renovated mm -hmm. the 17-room house, so it, it was no big deal. But they don't even want to paint. No, paint no. No. Nothing. They don't want to do anything. Yeah. Okay, they want it to be brand new, only not cost what a brand new house would. And I think one thing that's changed is that engagement begins online. So you can lose a buyer before they even step foot in your house if they don't like what they see in the photos online. If it Whereas, looks too cluttered in yeah. the photos, oh, I don't yeah. want to do that. Or if the perception is it needs too much work or it looks dark, you know, it's, yeah. the attention span's just not there the way that it used so to be. So they're shopping online first. Well, it's a very fast-paced society, and, you know, time is more important. So they just want move-in ready. They don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I so, would just add the exception to that that I've found. I've been doing a lot of work with first-time home buyers, and they're pretty interesting because they, in general, are like, "Wow, my fridge makes water, and there's a roof, and you know, like <laughs> they're not nearly as picky <laughs> as people who are maybe getting their second, third, fourth house. So they're the exception to that rule, I think. But anybody else who's buying a second or further home, they do expect it's it's turnkey. Otherwise, you're not going to get the money you want for it, no matter mm -hmm. how good condition the house is overall. But What's what's selling? So I mean, you're you're where we don't have first time home buyer kinds of properties, do we? Mm -hmm. We do. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So tell me tell me what's a first time home buyer property here? Um, I would say Queens and Brentwood areas are areas that are still considered first time home buyer properties. You're looking um, for property. So even mine, okay? Because I was mm -hmm. in Queens, I had what's called the Princess, the four bedroom mm -hmm. uh, ranch, ranch. Uh, so that's that's the first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. and I, and I think they had a lot more money as first time home yeah, buyer so than I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think but that there's quite a range. But even back 20 years ago, people were still coming from the same areas. They're coming from the looking in the Framingham and Natick areas, and not finding what they're looking, getting. They're not getting what they would like to have there. Mm -hmm. So they venture out a little further, and they go, well, "How about this other little spot out there called Holliston?" And they find us, and they fall in love with us, and then they, they get what they want. Okay, so what does a homeowner need to do if he or she is about to, you know, they're sitting there thinking about it, and believe me, I'm going to bet there are a lot of seniors out there who are thinking about it. What do they have to do to start? Where do they start? Aaron, you want to try that one? 
So uh, we generally recommend that the first thing somebody should do is get a licensed real estate professional into the house to go through it and not only give an idea of value, but we can also advise as to what they should and shouldn't do. Um, a lot of times people say, oh, I was thinking of redoing the kitchen, and that's not really, you're not going to get the money back for putting that in, and you might turn people off with what you do to it. Um, and then it's really important to bring in a professional stager. Because the stager, I mean, you know, we go in and out of houses all day long, but the stagers look at things differently than you know, your Real average people. person does. Right. <laughs> and they'll see things, you know, whether it's curtains or pillows or things on or off the wall or exterior things, clean your gutters, you know, prune the shrubs, put some mulch down. Um, it goes beyond just bringing some furniture in or taking it out. It, they really look at the whole big picture, right? You have some moss on your roof, get that power washed. So all this preparation can take weeks to a month. So I always tell people, if you're even considering, like in the next year, bring somebody in. You know, start the process, get the ball rolling, understand how much you're going to have to do. And especially for seniors, there is that issue of the whole decluttering and what are you keeping, what do your kids want, what Nothing. are you going to donate. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. also that's something else, right? A lot yeah. of these younger yeah, that's true. people don't want the big hutch full of china yeah. and yep. all these other, you know, the, the heirlooms and the hummels and stuff. So. Um, it's not an easy process, especially for people who might have been somewhere for 30 to 40, 50 years. It's astonishing the amount. I mean, you, you went through it. The amount of things you accumulate and you start opening closet doors and looking under beds and yeah. the attic and the garage and the basement. So really important to, to get a head start on what exactly do you need to do to get the most money for your house? Because, yes, it's a hot seller's market. But you will get more if your house is, you know, at least Ready. tidy and empty. Mm -hmm. Correct. Anybody want to add anything? Did he leave it? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, another thing when you're starting to, when you think you're going to sell your house is to get a Title V because you have, oh, yeah. you have two years to hold on to that, so mm -hmm. better to get that done right away. Oh, yeah. If there's a problem, you could save to get it fixed or whatever. Um, and then, as Aaron said, you know, make your list, um, <laughs> call your family members in and try to, try to empty out the house. It is... I mean, I've no, I haven't moved in 31 years. It's I can imagine daunting. Yeah, yeah. less is yeah. more. You yes. need a real a real estate person, a realtor, or otherwise that is going to hold your hand through the whole thing. So mm -hmm. get somebody you really like, right. <laughs> because it's going to be. What do I have to do? Oh no! <laughs> so just a quick point on Title Five. There are some Title Five companies out there that will replace the system and get paid at closing. Because I yes. know that's a big concern for a lot of people. Is like mm -hmm. that's a lot. It's twenty five to thirty thousand dollars up front in a lot of cases. A lot of seniors don't have that liquid cash. Right. So there are, you know, your your real estate agent should be able to point you to companies that are willing to get paid at closing. I just did that. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's a, thank mm -hmm. God, right? Because yes, there, I, there's several yeah. places where we never would have gone on the market if we couldn't have done it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you can't empty your house for some reason? I mean, you can declutter. But I mean, to, to the degree that it sounds like... Can I take the pressure off of that a little bit? Okay. If you don't want to do anything, yeah. there's a whole bunch of buyers out there willing to give you less money mm -hmm. for okay. your house. Okay, good point. Yeah. There's yeah. a so, point. Great answer. So you can, important point. you can leave everything behind and walk out the door if you need to. Mm -hmm. Because there's plenty of that group of buyers are out there. You're just not going to get as much money as you would if you staged it. You want to guess on the differential? As, as an investor myself, you still have to build in your profit, so you have to build in 30% off yeah. sometimes. So 30% less of what I could get, but by the same token, for some of the work that's involved, it's something <laughs> worth thinking about. <laughs> right? <laughs> Walking away and leaving. We're talking some houses have, have old roof, old windows. Yes. Old heating system. Yeah. They're not going to be able to fix everything. Old septic system, not going to be able to replace. There are buyers out there. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. That's also a little encouraging because I, the way I look at it is that you, there are certain things you're going to have to do anyway. You're going to take your personal stuff and everything mm -hmm. else like that. But making those decisions, if you have someone that gives you good guidance, that's, uh, that's the most important thing. And one other point, Mary, is sometimes a buyer will come in and want to purchase some of the things that the seller has. So, yeah. you know, if they don't want to take their furniture or television or whatever, if it's affixed to the wall, they may want to purchase that. So, especially the first time home buyers. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a lot yeah. of money. I'm, I'm dealing with more and more people coming from Boston and its environs who are coming from these teeny tiny apartments yeah. where they've got like mm -hmm. nothing. And so, you do end up, I've had scenarios where I've had sellers leave like most of their stuff behind. 
or they would sell it to them. Mm -hmm. And there are also services you can work with that will work with a homeowner to identify like, okay, what are you going to donate? We can help sell this stuff yeah, on consignment well, for you and take I it did all do, off your I hands. I did do that. Yeah. yeah, so there are options if you are like incapable of physically clearing it out yourself. Mm -hmm. But, but it's still it's exhausting. exhausting. It is exhausting. It is, and um, it's stressful. Yeah. But I think it's important that even if a buyer is considering purchasing some of your things, you're going to donate it, that my experience is that a vacant house never shows as well as even a sparsely furnished house, because sure. especially mm -hmm. with first-time buyers, because you have to give each room a little purpose. People have a hard time figuring out where would I put the couch, where would the TV go. So mm -hmm. even if you just have a few basic things in the house, it's helpful. And that's where your stager would come in. You don't, does the uh, person who's selling the house, I know the answer to this question, but I'm doing this anyway. The person who's selling the house have to pay for the stager too, or does that, is that something that the um, real estate professional pays for? It depends. I it's, think, yeah. you know, you have different I, practices. Yeah, I think okay. people do it differently. Okay. Fine. We generally, at my agency, we generally cover that cost. And when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> <laughs> I split it with my brokerage. So, um, but, you know, not everyone does that. And sometimes mm -hmm. there's, you know, people have different promotions where they do it. And it's, mm -hmm. depending on who you use, it's not that much money. I think there's a no. little misperception. I mean, it could be as cheap as 125 bucks oh. to get staging done yeah. on up. Where do you right. go? <laughs> we'll talk yeah. offline. <laughs> so when, you, when somebody starts shopping around for a house, how much does the community matter? I'm going to let anybody who wants to speak to that one. How much does community matter? Matters. I think it matters mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. I think it really matters. And how is Holliston holding up in that? I think Holliston is and has always been and I hope will always be a very desirable community. I think our downtown is very charming. I think the schools are very good. And one thing that's harder to convey, you know, at least you know, in a, from a marketing perspective, is the sense of community. You know, mm -hmm. but I think we all do relay that to, to buyers, but it's a very special place. So I, th I think yeah. it's a very desirable you community. You just have to tell buyers to come back every weekend and there's something going on. So there's always something that we can send them to. So whether it's Celebrate Holliston or some craft fair or historical society event, yeah. there's usually something that we, in the upcoming week or two, that we can direct them to, which is pretty amazing. I heard of somebody who did, did take somebody's advice and came and, and went to something that she didn't care about. It was a, a, a baseball game or a something or other, but then it gave her the opportunity to talk to the parents of the kids mm -hmm. at the game yep. get and get a sense feel. of yeah. what was going yeah. on. Yeah. That's a good idea. So yeah. a lot of times people come out on a Sunday afternoon and maybe there's stuff going on, but not necessarily, but coming back another time and seeing, you know, what it's like when the bus comes. You know, I'll sometimes say to people, come at the end of the day and see how many kids are getting off the bus stop if being in a neighborhood with a lot of kids is important. Uh -huh. And so that people get to see Holliston in many different, from many different vantage points. But that's got to create stress if, in fact, there is a bidding war going on. I mean, there's, that's got to really up the ante as far as the time is concerned. So what do you think are the, any of the weaknesses that we might have as a community? Is there anything that, from a community perspective, we need to be addressing that makes it more challenging for um, people selling their home? Is there anything? Do you get lack of a sewer system, <laughs> which I know is a hot button issue in town here. But you know, anytime you go into a town that's all septic systems, it's a bit of a challenge because I've had people who, especially people from you know closer to Boston, sure. who flat out will not buy a house with a septic system. Yeah, if they don't have gas, and they don't have sewer, they're not interested. Okay. Um, so I think that's probably something. And um, what about the water system, where there's been some publicity about water? Do, do, does that trickle down? Whoops, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, have, do you get any kind of comments about that stuff? Well, I think um, social media is probably Ooh, something yeah. out there yes. that, that certainly is causing a little bit of panic with the buyers. And they're doing this in all towns, not just Holliston. Sure. But I think um, whenever there's information being given in sound bites like that and and they're not able to dig into it that deeply, I think many times they should and do turn to their buyer agent and ask them what is the factual information, yeah. and we hand that to them. I, I remember one story about Ashland, obviously, um, with a Superfund site over there, mm -hmm. and 
with people concerned about the water and they were looking at Ashland and Hopkinton and they wanted to go to Hopkinton. And I said, well, you do realize that Hopkinton buys their water from Ashland. <laughs> and that kind of information that we have as factual data is something that causes people to pause and say, oh, why? You know, because the, the water pumps for Ashland are upstream from Nyanza. It's really not the issue being affected. And so when you give data like that, um, and, and, you know, the, the news about that, um, historical news, sometimes that puts them at ease and causes them to, to say, oh, maybe we shouldn't be thinking in sound bites. Maybe we should be getting the facts. Right. And emotion. People, if we can provide facts rather than people just reacting based right. on opinion mm. and emotion. Why don't we wish that very... could happen everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> don't just leave it at real estate. So... Um, the other issue that we had, and I heard some flurry of activity about, was building the new high school. And that there were some people, because they had a, a meeting at the high school where they had people come in, and there were some that were people that um, maybe don't live here already. I'm assuming they were just looking around. But they were concerned because the high school seemed so old to them. Um, it was really remodeled in 2003, which isn't that long ago. But at any rate, um, What's the, what's the drive on that? What's the take on that? Do people ask? I mean, does this really matter? I think that parents really do yeah. focus on that. Really? Yeah, that I think that the school structures as well as the school system do mm -hmm. matter. Um, and I think that some of the surrounding towns, the high schools are newer. Are ones, and yeah. But I also think that our school system is a very, very strong one. And so yeah, I, I'd be I'd be arguing the, that case. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. does the building matter as much as the system? But anyway, I don't hear anything of the building no. itself. Um, I do. You know, it's a good, very good school system, and that's why people are drawn here. Mm -hmm. um, when I have people, you know, my buyers, I always say, go downtown. You know, Barathena is there now. Go to Barathena. You know, come down on a Saturday. Go to Fisk's. Always send them to Fisk's. Sure, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, just um, yeah, the lake just walk. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It really is. It's a safe community. We have a great, you know, police station. Um, you know, it's a great place to raise your children, raise your family. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know. not so great when you get to my stage of life mm -hmm. if you're looking for alternative housing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's the one. It really is focused in the other direction. Do you have any worries that are sort of within the, within the community that you think affects um, your work? Is there anything that you would, nothing in particular? No, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> um, so in the rental market, do you folks do much in the rental market? We were talking earlier before we went on the air about accessory apartments, those would be um, well, like the big houses on Washington Street, lots of them have accessory apartments in them, um, but they were created long before bylaws were, and many of them were, were done during uh, World War II. Um, and so you have a bunch of small apartments inside big houses. Now the only way you can do that is if you're going to do it for a family member. So it's for an, uh, literally an in-law or a child or something like that. So do people ask you for apartment that kind of opportunity for an in-law apartment specifically. I, I'm a big supporter of the accessory dwelling unit. It's something where um, I'm a supporter of it because we hear it from our clients that they have parents that they'd like to have either stay with them or live with them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really a, a nice added feature to be able to have some options out there for them. And I don't think that any of the communities in the area really have a large quantity of that available to them, mm. and it's something that maybe would set us apart as a community and would keep that um, whole process of keeping an extended family close, close together, together. Mm -hmm. uh, that would re work really well. Mm -hmm. Does anybody talk about little houses? I mean, those are kind of like accessory apartments. Thank you. you know, I love the idea of a little house. Tiny house, whatever. But if I can add on to what Ed said about having, you know, parents come and stay with you, I think there's also an increased demand for that boomerang generation, the <laughs> new college grads yeah. or high schoolers who can't afford to move into the city or, you know, even to another town or even afford an apartment. 
in Holliston should it be available, um, but they don't want to live under the same roof necessarily mm -hmm. um, and might want to have some independence, have a kitchen, a living room, bedroom. So I think the demand is really multi-generational. Or just say no. Or just say no. Or that. just make the rent really high so yeah. that it <laughs> quicker. Do you have anything to add to that about the accessory apartments? Nothing any different? I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, there's a need. Now, we have commercial properties that have apartment units up above, right? So that you have downstairs, I, I'm thinking about where, um, like the gun shop or what used to be the gun shop upstairs, there's an apartment in that building. I'm not aware you don't of get, that, you no. don't, Those don't cross your path? No, they haven't. Yeah, okay. But they probably rent immediately well, or else they've been there a long time. Yeah, so do you know what the rents are going for for any of those kinds of things that are available? The only ones I know about are the ones that I hear about from Turner Road, which is, they're very high. Rents in general rents across high. the board are really high. And yes. this is a situation where I think a lot of consumers aren't educated in this. There are so many first time home buyer programs out there designed to help low to moderate income people buy a house. Because if you're looking at first, last security, maybe a fee, you know, the rent's $2,000 a month, that's a down payment on a $300,000 ish house. Now, we still have the problem of limited inventory at the like three to 400 price point everywhere around here. But I just wish people understood, like, that there are grant programs out there from the Federal Home Loan Bank where you can get an actual gift down payment from the government, mm -hmm. um, mass housing. There's a lot of options. And when I do get people calling or coming into my office and asking about rentals, I try and steer the conversation in that direction because there's just a perception. I would never have enough money to for a down payment. And people think you need 20 percent. And you really don't. You know, there's a lot of options out there. And I encourage people, reach out, get educated, mm -hmm. explore. Because... There's just, on top of all the money they're spending, you know, the competition for rentals is pretty much just as fierce because they are yeah. very yes. scarce in this yeah, town particularly. Point. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I, don't, I don't know what we have for rental units, but, I mean, it's really small, small. pickings. Small pickings for slim. sure. And the, um, I mean, there is an affordable housing committee, a market affordable housing co committee that's looking at some of this stuff. We have talked about little things like tiny houses and stuff. Does anybody ask you about tiny houses, the ability to do tiny houses? No. Nothing, huh? No imagination. Really? Yeah. <laughs> People want big houses. They want big houses, want big right? Houses. <laughs> yeah. They see it on TV, and that it looks really cool and funky, but I don't think there's many people around here who could spend the winters in 400 square feet. Well, okay. I guess it's the definition of a tiny Are you house. If you're, I'm talking about the 700 to 1,000 square feet. I mean, that's a, we're not talking. Those are fine. But, Those yeah. are fine. I think the um, I think right now the uh, in-law bylaw is 680 square feet. Mm -hmm. It's too small. Mm -hmm. it's so small. what I would picture for a separate apartment would be a small kitchen, family room, dining area, and two bedrooms. And something like that, you really can't fit into that kind of size. It would be a one bedroom, and people are clamoring for that extra space. So it needs to be a little bit bigger. For sure. Yeah. Um, but if you think about a Brentwood ranch, you know, those are 1,000 square feet. And mm -hmm. those are very, very desirable. There are even some that have never been added on to either. No, that's very true. You know, yeah, uh, true. in Queens, I think there are more that have had. They're a little bigger. I think the yeah. footprint of the Queens they ranch are. is, they are is bigger. Yeah. bigger. But. Yeah. Um, but certainly, I would say, you know, a thousand square feet, and those have three bedrooms, one bath. I mean, a family of five could live there. I mean, right. maybe it's, it's a difference between, you know, how people want to live and what they might need and be able to afford. Right, right. right. Wow. Let's talk about the commercial market. I don't know, besides you, Lisa, is anybody else involved in commercial all that much? I mean, do you, this, uh, no. you do a too? Bit, a little bit. A little bit more on the residential commercial side. Yeah. Apartment um, buildings. So let's let's talk about the commercial side. Um, there was an article that was recently in the Holliston Reporter about, oh my God, we've got a ghost town downtown. You know, yeah. I said to Bobby, cut it out. <laughs> you know, that that's really uh, ridiculous. We go through these uh, spells first of all, but secondly, every one of those has a very those vacancies all have different reasons that every, have nothing to do with downtown Holliston. You know, everyone whether, has a story. Yeah, they all have a story, and it's all pretty much either a personal story or a business decision. In the case of TD Bank, right. you know, TD Bank had one two doors two two miles away, and they didn't get that much traffic in the combined, you know, businesses. Who goes to the bank? You know, um, mm -hmm. so at any rate, 
is there any activity in the commercial market? What do we need? So I do a lot with, um, you know, the office space in Holliston is great. And it's generally speaking, it's people that, um, you know, are in their home office and they say, you know, hey, I want to get out of the house because the kids are home and I get distracted. So um, that market is fantastic because they'll pay, they don't want to pay five, six hundred dollars, but they'll pay four, four fifty mm -hmm. with everything included. So that's, you know, Water Street is, is fantastic for people coming out of their home office. Um, How many businesses are in there? There's a lot. And 23 has, um, you know, all therapists in there. Huh. Um, 13 is, you know, lawyers and, you know, businesses and, and therapists as well. It's great. And the mill is filled. So um, I deal a lot with that. I mean, as far as, you know, like you said, every, every vacancy has a story. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the stories is um, I think they would probably lease faster uh, or be more desirable if we had sewer. Mm -hmm. And at least if we had sewer in the downtown area. Yep. And, you know, even in the industrial parks, I think um, a lot more people would come to Holliston because we are in the 495 belt. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have uh, the sewer capacity, then you just you can't have restaurants and all the things that I think we want a little bit of now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. There was a bakery that tried very, very hard a few years ago. I tried. And it just, you know, it just didn't work. Yeah. And um, in that particular case, he wasn't even going to be baking in the building. He was bringing baked product. Right. It was like, boy, I, I, meaning speaking for myself, was having a lot of trouble understanding why that didn't work. You know, what is it yeah. that that's like you're being a vending machine? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's coming in a package. It's not being vended out of a machine. You're selling it, but it's not being made there. So that one didn't make sense to me. No. Probably a timing thing, too. I mean, it's interesting. There's a big push these days more and more for, like, fire to table and fresh and organic. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, they're now selling... There's some company in Milford that's selling their bread in Hickey's Liquor Store yeah, we several that. days a week. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah, it's exactly. So, like out. I said, the timing just yeah. may not have been there yeah. for that kind of thing. I mean, I think, you know, downtown Austin is fantastic. It's, it's, it's why we ended up here. I was living in Natick and working in Milford. And after my first couple round trips, I called my wife. I'm like, you got to see this place. You would love this. we got the churches. We've got the general store. I mean, it's all here. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. So, um, you know, I just, I don't think there's any one, you know, to Bobby's point, I don't think it's, it has anything to do with taxes. I don't think it has anything yeah. to do. I mean, if anything, I'm, I hate to bring this up to be the one, but the traffic yeah. and parking is a, yes. kind of an issue. But yes. I don't think that explains all of them. I don't think any one factor explains all these vacancies at the same time. I think it's just kind of a coincidence. Yeah. Well, and I can tell you it's happened before because I, when I was in 1975, I was looking for a place to, to rent for a plant shop. And there were like four different openings downtown, right? Just in the little box that's downtown, you know? So I had my choice. Mm -hmm. Within a week, all of them were gone, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. So it was, it's just yeah. serendipity. Mm -hmm. um, so is there anything that we, okay, so the septic system, well, that's been a long, the sewer system, that's been a long time. We tried in the 80s to do a communal system for downtown that took the um, waste product to Potoma mm -hmm. and put a big giant leach field there. It was for less than a million dollars and still failed. So, um, you know, anyway, what can I do at this point? Or what can I say at this point? We've tried so many different things. I think it's a solution. Um, I do think with the rail trail, there has been some conversation that the rail trail, you could put pipes under the rail trail mm -hmm. and take it down to the treatment plant that's down by the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so there are at least a few people who have that as a thought, whether or not it'll ever come to fruition. Um, do you guys personally have any hopes for what might happen with the um, 9 Green Street? You know, it's it's down there. I think you're on the committee, are you? No, Lisa? I'm not you're on the committee, the economic um, but committee. as I understand, it, it's being lean, leaning towards parking, mm -hmm. uh, which we so desperately need. Okay. And I know that the park would love to have the parking, you know, because they, they're they complaining. No parking. Yeah, yeah, there's no parking for them. So anything else that you hear about any of the other things, like the Gulf Station, anybody? There's a lot of complaints about that one, but Cumberland still owns it, so. And I, I understand they're opening. Yeah, and I know about, that would you know, be great. A bakery, whether it's, you know, the 
B, I think it's Bees, which is selling in, yes. at, Hickey's, um, yeah. yep. at Hickey's, but just having some place like that right downtown, I think would, would be, be fantastic. Would be great. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Another committee. And then, yeah. yeah, right. And then TD Bank, uh, maybe for the library. Yes. The, library's the library's certainly library looking at that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anything else? Well, Santander, that uh, building is for sale. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, that bank, the bank, the is building. going, no, or the just, the no, 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 just the just the building. building. Okay. The bank is the a new five-year lease, so they're there, oh, okay. but they're okay. selling the building. Oh, the building. Interesting. Interesting. New landlord. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. But I think a lot of these places that we talk about are privately owned, so everyone has all these ideas on what Can't should happen yeah, to them. Exactly. But it's it's really the, the the owners of those properties who are the ones who get to decide that, and the only way around that is. Buy, them. buy TD Bank, and then you can do what you want, and put what you want in there potentially. Yeah. But when you get brass taxes, that you go down there, and the parking is a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and that was always an issue for them as well. It was a, probably an issue when it was Framingham Savings Bank mm -hmm. way back when. So, I think um, I think it's just a matter of instead of us coming up with the social media ideas of what should be going there, we have to look at it with a broader brush from government to say how can we put the best structure in place so that these places have a fighting chance, whether it be mm -hmm. sewers or enough parking or what have you. you, you put the structure in place and then build it, they, they will, will come. come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, the, you know, one of the little buildings, the one between Fisk's and the library, I mean, the rent for that property is prohibitively high for anybody who wants to, yes. want, wants to go in there, you know, and, and there's nothing you can do. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. That's what the landlord wants, and so it's, it's vacant, you know. It's been yeah. vacant Not, for quite some time. Yep. Absolutely. So do you have any last words of information, suggestions, anything we've missed that we should be talking about when we're talking about Holliston Real Estate? But I would just say I'm very positive on Holliston. Holliston's a town that people have clamored for since I was a kid and now grown with my own, own family here. This is a town that people, even though you might hear sound bites about school or water or traffic, um, in the end, it's a great community to live in. And I think everyone who drives through and sees the plantings and the care that goes into this mm -hmm. town by the volunteers that are out there, it's just going to be continuing the way it is now. And so even if we were status quo, I'm happy here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a native, right? I'm a native. Yeah. Kathy, any closing thoughts? I agree with that. It's, it's a very charming town, and I think that people really enjoy living here. And um, I think one thing that you mentioned, like the volunteerism, it's just remarkable how many people want to be invested in the community here. And I think it really speaks to the, the community and the town itself. Thank God there are people who want to do this stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Aaron, how about you? Um, you know, again, having lived here for a few years, you know, we love it. I personally feel, you know, you can look at us at a comparable size of like a Medway or a Millis, and I just feel like there's a stronger sense of togetherness here in this town. Uh, you know, and I work in Medway. They're both great towns. Certainly no knock on them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think the, the level of community involvement and things like, you know, everybody's on the rail trail and all the events that happen throughout the year. Um, it's really nice to see in this day and age where everyone's so busy and, and, you know, things are fractured and you don't spend as much time with your neighbors. You know, you go to the Queens and everybody's out walking and talking and they all know each other. And, I, you know, I really like that. It's one of my favorite things about this place. So it's a very, very popular town. Again, the biggest problem is we need more people to sell their houses <laughs> so that we can keep people coming in. So call us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lisa, do you have anything else you wanted to add? You know, I love the town. Um, it's a small, tight-knit community. Um, I rem I lived here for 31 years and I remember it was in August. I just, I even remember the smell. Um, so every, you know, every August, I can just feel it when, when spring and summer come. So, um, like I said before, it's a great place to raise your family and every, every small town has their their you know problems or issues. We're not Absolutely. the only we're not the only ones. Absolutely. We're not the only ones with vacancies downtown. Um, <laughs> you know we have great schools. We have um, um, wonderful community and uh, and we've got the rail trail. And we have the rail trail. The rail trail is a huge fabulous. addition. Uh, huge addition. It is. You know, really. Just today, I, so silly, funny, but 
um, my grandson was going to something that was up at the Parks and Rec building at 1750 mm -hmm. Washington Street, and his mother said, oh, he can walk home. And it was like, you're going to let him walk on Washington Street? And she said, no, he's going to walk the rail trail. It's like, right back ah, yep. isn't that clever? Yeah. <laughs> you no, know? right, door to door. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. All right, folks. Well, I hope this has given you some insight into what you can and should do. Uh, about selling your home if you're thinking about doing it. I would echo the thought about get a jump start on it. Even if you're two years early, it doesn't matter. You know, it's it's, it's really not like the issue is going to go away. But when you do go to do it, it's going to be intense. So pace yourself. All right. Good, good luck with your uh, case there. And I'll see you next time. All righty. Bye-bye.